I've made that tasty shiitake in the fastest way to make it, and it had no splatter at all. When I say fast, woo, express. <laughs> Thanks to Bezalia God and Food. That recipe is inspired by her. So please go and check her channel out. Watch all her videos, subscribe, and also like the videos you watch. And tell her, her sister from the Nabis Kitchen sent you. And this Ghanaian chili sauce is good on everything. And I mean everything. I love it, especially on my wache. And it was fun to make this shit off. Mr. Director, roll the tape. Even my husband who shot this video as well as my other shit videos thought this method was fun. All right, now watch till the end and let me know what you think, drop a comment. Now traditionally, you'd blend your onions, your garlic, your ginger, and any other wet ingredients you're adding, and then fry them till dry, and add your other ingredients, your other dry ingredients to get shito. This method, however, is a deconstructed. The whole process is deconstructed. We're going to rather prep the onions by slicing them thinly, do the same with the ginger I'm working on right now, and then I'm going to mince my garlic, and then we're going to fry them until bone dry and then process them to shito. So this shito preparation style invented by Bezalia Garden Food presents or offers you three amazing principles. One, there is no splatter. It does, it's not a matter of it reduces splatter. There is none, none whatsoever. Also, the taste is more maximized. Your shito will taste a whole lot better, like shito you've never had before, all right? So I'm speaking from experience here. And also, your time will be cut down by 85%. It is groundbreaking method of making shito, not overhyping anything. I don't need to. I'm going to pan it on the home. My onions, garlic, ginger are prepped. Here are my habaneros. Here are some fresh shrimps. My chili powder, shrimp powder, tomato paste, herrings powder, aromatics are rosemary, aniseed, and also some salt to season and to taste. Let's cook some shit sauce. <laughs> you need lots and lots of oil to fry shit sauce. Remember, we're making chili oil. That's what shit sauce is. And I'm going to let this oil heat up. I'm going to fry my onions first, followed by the ginger and then the garlic. We'll also fry our shrimps with the habanero chilies and then all of our wet ingredients would have become dry at that point. Then we'll follow up with frying the tomato paste, add our dry ingredients and then we're good to go. Important, you must fry the onions until they are golden brown and remove them promptly because last thing you want is for them to burn. They will become bitter, which we're trying to avoid at all cost. Make it a point to remove every piece of onion left in that oil prior to frying the next batch of ingredients, which is our ginger slices. Yep, it was fun. And I couldn't help but break into that happy dance. Ginger is almost bone dry, so yeah, that's looking good. Now friends, let's talk about at least three principles that this method is going to offer you that you must absolutely 
look for. You must yearn for these principles next time you make chiton. No doubt. The taste is going to be better to where you won't even need your bouillon cubes. Why? Because you're really essentially caramelizing all your ingredients, which maximizes that sweetened taste. All right. That, that beautiful taste you want in your chateau. Trust and believe all you need is your salt to season to taste. Now, your time is going to be cut down significantly, at least 80%. Now our, our garlic is also looking great. It's golden brown, so it must come out of the oil right now. I actually turned the heat down to prevent it from burning. The next thing, the next principle that I have to mention is the fact that there is no splatter. Forget about there's a little bit of splatter, but not as much. No, there is none. Splatter happens when moisture hits oil. Now there is no moisture here. You haven't released the moisture by agitating these ingredients in a blender, right? You have just sliced them thinly, the moisture was contained, you fry them till bone dry, and then you go back and put everything together. Why would you get any splatter? None whatsoever. Why would you ever go back using your traditional old method to prepare shito again? Uh, Keeping these three amazing principles in mind, I would never make it to any other way ever again, but using this method. So now we're frying our shrimps and our habanero chili. We're almost there, friends. Keep on watching and enjoying the process. Also, give me a thumbs up, friends. And then when you're done watching this video, hurry up, oh, hurry up. Run to Bezalia God of Food and please support her for me. I will greatly appreciate you. Make sure you tell her her sister from Nanabis Kitchen sent you. I have linked her channel below in the description box for your convenience. You click on that and it will send you straight to her channel. Looking good, looking good. Our wet ingredients are done frying till bone dry. Our kind of last but certainly not the least wet ingredient is our tomato paste. It's kind of wet, not all the way. So we're going to fry it to get rid of the wetness in it, the moisture in it, and we're good to go. Now I'm adding my shrimp powder, followed by the herrings powder, and then also my chili powder. And I'm going for the smooth texture. This time, I usually make my shito into a chunky texture, but today I'm going for my smooth texture. Last thing I poured in here was the aniseed, which was also in the powder form, so it's perfect. Stir that in and make sure your heat is turned off at this time because these ingredients, since they are dry, can easily and quickly burn. We, we don't want that to happen. So yeah, turn your heat completely off. Next thing we're gonna do is scoop some of this oil out because we we're going to need some of the oil and it has cooled down, by the way. It was cold outside today when we made the chateau, so everything cooled down very, very quickly. So yeah, we scooped some of the oil out and we're going to use the oil to just help move the blades of the blender while we blend our rosemary followed by our fried ingredients.
Now look and tell me what this looks like. It looks like chateau already. This is mainly the onions, some of the garlic and ginger, and I also added a bit of the shrimps, all right? And it looks like chateau already. And it tastes sweet, a frim frim. Oh, it is beautiful, friends. Yes, now I'm going to fry mostly the rest of the shrimps as well as the garlic, and then we're gonna pour that in. Add a little bit of the oil to move the blades, make it easier on your blender. All right. Notice the shrimp has a pinker color and that's just what happens when you cook shrimps, all right? So yeah, but it's definitely dry and so everything gets poured in here. We blend the last batch and add it and we're almost done, friends. At this point, I have turned the heat back up to medium and we're literally going to heat the ingredients up for about just five minutes, if that and our shito is ready. And that's when you enjoy the no splatter aspect of preparing shito. This method is groundbreaking. It is mind blowing. It is time saving. Definitely the taste is more incredible. And I tell you friends, it is fun to make shito like this. Going forward, I'm not going back. <laughs> no, not going back to the old way I made my shito. Uh-uh. This is it, y'all. Now I'm adding my salt to season. I will stir it in and I'll taste eventually to make sure that it is seasoned to perfection. And like I said, I'm only heating it up for five minutes and we have shito. Shito that will last a long time on the shelf, yes. Well, hello, good looking. This shit looks so good and it knows it does. Woo, boy, oh boy. Friends, try making your shit like this. So I've turned the heat completely off. Now we're going to let it sit and cool all the way down before we bottle these in less taste. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, drop the mic moment. Beautiful. Keep on watching, friends, to learn how to bottle and store the shito. Next day, our shito has cooled down, so it is time to bottle it. I want to share that process with you, and I'm also going to talk about a few tips on how to take care of your shito so it can last long for you. Let's dive in. Shito stores well if it's dry, when it's cooked dry, and you know this one was cooked nice and dry. And I like to store my shito in glass containers with airtight lids. I also use a funnel, and by the way, my glass containers are all sterilized, they are dry inside and out. And then I also like to use a sterilized funnel so that the shito goes directly into the container without hitting the rim because then I'll have to go and wipe that off which poses the risk of reintroducing germs. Now you notice we use a lot of oil to cook the shito and the reason is that the oil is actually a preservative. Then while your shito sits, the oil will rise to the top and keep the shito nice and preserved. Your shito will have a long shelf life. That is a guarantee if you take good care of it. So I am dishing some wache right now onto these leaves. I'm going to need some shito. 
And to take a dollop of that shit so or two, I will need a dry, clean spoon. So I have my wache, talia, garifoto, my fish, also my egg, and my wache stew. Now we need some salad in to balance everything in. And now we're going to introduce a dollop or two of the shit so. Here's my dry, clean spoon. I go deep and surpass the oil on the top and get only the shito, leaving the preservative, which is the oil. And I'm also making sure that the, the spoon is not touching the contents of the leaves. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below. And don't forget to share the video as well. Also, watch more videos. It is chop time, and here in Anaba's kitchen, chop time is always yes friends. So pull up a chair. We are all friends and family here.